The government of the Republic of Cameroon puts the coronavirus death toll in the country at 4.7% and recovery rate at 60%. The country has now recorded close to 3,000 confirmed COVID-19 cases and the United Nations Organization is urging countries to do more to uh, improve on the psychological situation of persons affected by by the coronavirus and also in this newscast will take you to the Limbe Wildlife Center in the southwest region of the country. It is a tourist destination gradually being killed, a tourist site being gradually killed by the Anglophone crisis and the coronavirus pandemic. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us on this edition of the Primetime Newscast on Equinox Television Live from my headquarters in Cameroon's economic capital, Douala. I am Babla Jonathan. We begin with news on the coronavirus pandemic in the Republic of Cameroon. 2,910 confirmed cases have been recorded in the country. These uh, figures were released earlier today or this evening by the Prime Minister and Head of Government. Chief Dr. Joseph Jenguti, who is heading the country's national COVID-19 response team. And the Prime Minister indicated that more than 160 recoveries have been recorded. That is more than 160 persons have been successfully treated of COVID-19 and uh, some 139 persons have died according to official figures the death rate stands at 4.7 percent and the recovery rate stands at 60 percent in the republic of cameroon and the prime minister and head of government notably highlighted other measures taken by the government of the republic of cameroon to curb the spread of coronavirus the president of the republic has decided to renew the implementation of the anti-covid 19 measures of government by 15 more days renewable depending on the evolution of the pandemic in the country and the president has also decided that schools will resume at the primary secondary and of course the higher levels on the first of june also depending on the evolution of the pandemic the head of state has also decided on other measures uh, taken by the government of the country and the wearing of face masks remains obligatory across the national uh, territory and of course the prime minister urged all persons on the cameroonian territory to respect strictly all the government's anti-COVID-19 measures and the sanitation rules of the World Health Organization in order to stop the spread of the COVID-19 in the Republic of Cameroon. And now there were some changes that were announced uh, yesterday on the academic calendar for the current school year and the next school year. And some measures also have been taken by the government to ensure that students and pupils will return to school, notably class 6 and Kumoin Edu in the primary level for the French and English subsystems of education and other examination classes at the secondary school level uh, will also resume and go to school and at the level of the university without facing the uh, risk or with a lower risk of contracting coronavirus. And we talked to an educationist and innocent as he compiled this report. Is for the first ahead of official examinations to be written in the months of July and August. Whether candidates are fully prepared or not, an educationist analyzes the situation, saying, uh, These are extraordinary times, and therefore, you know, everybody is juggling with what they have to try to make sure that we make some, something reasonable in the first part of the academic year. And the Rose educational system has been structured where education has been teacher centered than student. In real societies, education is crafted the other way around, it's student or people oriented. That means you ask questions and then you craft the curriculum in the way that children study. 
you give them material to study you guide them in the study so it is the children studying and discovering and understanding things so that it is not this issue of um, a tape recorder reciting back to you to him still the COVID-19 pandemic has brought something good in the educational system a transition though some persons will be hurt yes there will be exams there will be what, whatever we want to call it it will not be as good as we would have loved it to be but let us understand it as a welcome opportunity for the whole nation to change our educational policy to change the approach so that come the next academic year with COVID-19 gone we'll be doing things differently we will rewrite our curricula and our education will be completely different the time has come like they say in politics if you don't play politics politics go play you so we are not doing the right thing COVID-19 would help us to do the right thing whether we like it or not Dr. Nick believes the COVID-19 could be dribbled to avoid students contamination after government's decision for school resumption on June the 1st for this current year and starts of the 2020-2021 school year, October 5th and the 15th for primary schools and higher institutions respectively. In spite of the fact that the enemy is very challenging, but we know ways and means of getting around that enemy. We are trying to create that position of balance where we can carry on with our life while, paying, while being attentive and paying attention to the evils of COVID-19. And then we are saying, if we could open the bars, though that is not something that I buy, why not do something about the schools? While lifting the suspension on schools, vigilance must be observed to avoid contamination at school. We want them to be, there must be some, there must be some evidence of social distancing. They should wear masks while at school. They should wash their hands. I mean, I mean, carry on our lives in every aspect while keeping coronavirus at bay. That is the most important thing. And you realize that the issue with coronavirus is more about discipline. The educationist calls on everyone to heal the COVID-19, which brings a wind of change in Cameroon's educational system, where students will now be compelled to study on their own while at home and to be ready for any examination at any appointed time, like the case today, due to this pandemic. And a reminder of the latest COVID-19 figures in the Republic of Cameroon, 2,910 confirmed cases, 1,697 recoveries, 1,137 deaths recorded so far. Death rate stands at 4.7% and recovery rate at 60%. And the President of the Republic of Cameroon, Paul Beer, has provided two million face mask for vulnerable groups of persons in the country and the distribution of the face mask was launched today in the nation's political capital Yaoundé under the supervision of the Minister of Territorial Administration at Tanganji Paul and speaking to the press the minister emphasized on individual and uh, collective uh, responsibilities uh, with regards to efforts to stop the spread of COVID COVID-19 and the different arms of the state continue mobilizing and uh, stepping up efforts to uh, bring down the curve of COVID-19 that has continued rising in the Republic of Cameroon in the town of uh, Limbe the or in the FACO division the National Gendarmerie has been on the streets sensitizing the population on the importance of respecting all the anti-COVID-19 measures of government and the World Health Organization uh, correspondent Davidson Maimo reports. The fight against the coronavirus pandemic intensifies with every sector of the government and the society at large involved. The National Gendarmerie in FACO Division was in the field to sensitize the population of FACO about the measures put in place by government to combat the deadly disease. The objective is just to sensibilize the population and to stop the coronavirus because we need our population with us 
after boya mutengene tk1 ed now the fakujan company commander hefat michael jewel and his lms with support from the red cross visited almost every public place in limbe the men and women in uniform moved through the major street all and new market distributing flyers to everybody it was equal an opportunity for the company commander to assure the people of their security now in the in the faco division the southwest region some people have taken the habit to to kidnap and ask for for ransom very important for us to collaborate the population the defense and security forces have once again showed proof of their commitment in working for the interests of the public as enshrined in their code the army and the nation working together for a better cameroon and we stay in the opec city of limbe to talk about the town's wildlife center which is progressively being killed by the covid 19 and the anglophone crisis and davidson maimo was there and reports that if something is not done urgently the protected wildlife species in that center could be extinct in the nearest future his report These endangered species of animals that are highly protected here at the Limbe Wildlife Center, the actual risk being extinct if nothing is done fast so as to remedy the situation. Officials of the Limbe Wildlife Center say that they are facing financial crisis as budget from one of their biggest partners is declining. And even state's budget to support this project is equally dropping due to the ongoing anglophone crisis and recently the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, since this um, the nozzle crisis crisis started, we have uh, observed a drop on our visitors. That drop uh, on visitors led with the drop of the money earned at the gate. The message at the entrance of the Limbe Wildlife Center is clear: no visitor allowed until further notice. According to the conservator. The Zoological Center, managed by both the Government of Cameroon and the Pantelius Foundation through the Ministry of Forestry and Wildlife, is closed from the public following the outbreak of the coronavirus in Cameroon. We are applying the, the instruction of our hierarchy um, to temporarily close uh, the protected areas. The Wildlife Center is equally faced with serious financial crisis as explained by the Pandulus country director. We, we have been able to support the mission of the government of Cameroon to protect wildlife and that's what we intend to do but right now our funds are not coming anymore which is why for this period of time we are expecting the government of Cameroon to make extra effort to support the staff to support the care to the animal so that we can go through this period and maintain this animal that belongs to the national heritage of Cameroon and of Limbe. We have not laid some our workers. We rely on them and we need them. His point was buttressed by the conservator who added that the wildlife center has not laid out some staff due to the financial crisis as rumored. One of the patients transported from the Mario Clinic after it was shut down to the Lacantini Hospital has died. And the owner of the clinic, Dr. Ngula, is saying that he's been accused wrongly. According to him, he answered the quarrel later that the Minister of Public Health, Dr. Manauda Malachi, served him through the national or the Cameroon Medical Council and the one sent through the senior divisional officer of the Uri division did not reach him and so he's uh, according to him he's been accused wrongly however the clinic has been shut down the doors were closed yesterday by the senior divisional officer of the Uri division as for me I'm some standard report 24 hours after the decision of Cameroon's Minister of Public Health to close down Marie O. Polyclinic in the heart of Cameroon's economic capital, Douala, the senior divisional officer for the Fourier Division and security officials descended to the scene for proper implementation. 
Mario Polyclinic is accused, among other things, of hospitalizing coronavirus patients, whereas it is not among the health units pre-selected across the economic capital of Cameroon to treat COVID-19 victims. But the proprietor of the controversial polyclinic, Dr. Rougen Goula, says the decision of the minister will not be questioned. He says a Republican posture is what he has adopted while waiting for talks with the public health minister. Marie or polyclinic officials are also accused of having served a bill of over 14 million francs CFE to a Lebanese national hospitalized at the health unit who was not even sick of COVID-19, an accusation which has not been rejected by the proprietor Dr. Roger Goula, who rather choose to dwell on the fact that the Lebanese national got his health re-established after all. Dr. Roger Goula thinks that alone is a victory for the Cameroonian medical field, which would have been condemned if the foreigner died. It should be recorded that Monday this week, a family refused medical reports from this clinic that their father died of COVID-19, then forced out his dead body and attempted to take it away before being intercepted by gendarmerie elements. The same family accused health officials of the health unit of extorting a huge sum of money from them without adequate medical care given to their father, who finally died. Dr. Rujengula, the proprietor of the controversial clinic, said the family was provoked because he refused to falsify the medical report on the true circumstances that led to the demise of their father. While closing the polyclinic, which is now at the center of controversies across the Republic of Cameroon, the senior divisional officer for the Vuri Division, Benjamin Mbutu, said the clinic will only be open when the Minister of Public Health so decide. The United Nations is urging countries to do more to protect the psychological health of citizens uh, as the impact of the coronavirus continue rising. According to United Nations officials, there is more focus on the physical health of citizens and the mental health could be neglected. Katsi, Euronews. The unseen toll of the coronavirus crisis. Stress and anxiety arising from the pandemic are having an impact on the mental health of populations across Europe and the world. Confinement, isolation and restrictions on movement, just some of the pressures of these exceptional times. The UN Secretary General says governments need to do more to support the vulnerable in particular. The COVID-19 pandemic is now hitting families and communities with additional mental stress. Those most at risk are frontline health workers, older people, adolescents and young people, those with pre-existing mental health conditions and those caught up in conflict and crisis. We must help them and stand by them. The wide-ranging UN briefing on global mental well-being draws on studies from around the world. The figures relating to frontline health workers are especially alarming. There are some surveys that were done in uh, Canada where 47% of healthcare workers reported need for psychological support, 47%, so almost half of them. Um, in China, we have uh, different uh, figures for uh, depression, 50%, anxiety, 45%, insomnia, 34%. With the virus still spreading globally, the UN warns of a likely long-term upsurge in the number and severity of mental health problems. A new crisis requiring a reversal of decades of underinvestment by governments around the world. Paul Tasson, the reconstruction of the uh, northwest and southwest regions of the uh, country. Uh, that is a statement made by Paul Tasson, who is the leader of the reconstruction of the northwest and southwest regions of the country. He says that the reconstruction must go on irrespective of the current security context. He was speaking during a meeting uh, yesterday in Yaoundé, and it was revealed that the project will uh, take some 36 billion from CIV. For me, I'm from Sander Hasmo. Against all arguments in Cameroon that the presidential plan for the reconstruction and development of the northwest and southwest regions is putting the cart ahead of the horse, Minister Paul Tasson, coordinator of the program, says the construction 
can and must go on even within the present context. In it is written nowhere that the project can only unfold at the end of the crisis. The plan is a stage in the process to attain total peace. The objective of the plan is to end the crisis. Non -crise, in situation de paix. During the first meeting of the pilot committee for the reconstruction and development of the northwest and southwest regions in Yaoundé, Paul Tassong insists that the reconstruction is a means to an end which is total peace in the war-torn Anglophone regions. During the meeting, the first key actions to rebuild the destroyed Anglophone regions were announced. The coordinator says the first major action will be to convince the people of the northwest and the southwest regions to welcome the plan that is building them psychologically which will culminate in an intensive sensitization of local civil organizations on how the project will unfold. Paul Tasson further said the presidential plan for the reconstruction and development of the northwest and southwest regions intends to accompany local civil organizations to consolidate peace in the regions before the launch of the phase to reconstruct houses destroyed in the over three years armed conflict. With regards to basic infrastructures, we will begin with the rehabilitation of schools, health centers, roads, water points, bridges and broken electricity lines. Last but not the least will be the economic resurrection of the war-torn regions. This stage, according to the coordinator, comprised the reconstruction of markets and the provision of seeds to relaunch plantations destroyed in the regions. The reconstruction of the northwest and southwest regions of Cameroon is one of the major recommendations of the major national dialogue that took place in 2019, but seven months after, the recommendations are still on paper. Now we're going to talk about a 48-year-old man who has killed himself by hanging at Muyuka in Muyuka village in the uh, Mujuka village in the Mongo division of the littoral region of Cameroon reports say he committed suicide after his cocoa farm was burnt down. Smanjigan Gebre. It was with a joint pieces of cloth that Kanji Daniel, 48 year old, used in hanging himself at a nearby farm in Mujuka village under the Mongo division. Persons who came to work in their farms were surprised seeing the lifeless body hanging on a tree. Kanji Daniel reports C has been behaving like a mentally sick person since his cocoa farm was destroyed by flames until his demise this Thursday. When the farm got burned, the woman who committed the atrocity promised to make peace with him, and he accepted. He left Banga for Bafusam, and when he returned, he was still crying about the farm that was destroyed. He left no one in the house to sleep at any moment. After the body of Kanji Daniel was finally removed from the tree, he hung himself. He was buried on the spot. Talking point is up next. Our guest today, Dr. Tongan Fo, is an associate professor of medicine in the University of Wisconsin School of Medicine and Public Health. He is a public health expert and a board certified cardiologist practicing in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, United States of America. Doctor, you're welcome. Thank you, uh, Babila, for having me on your show. And, uh, it's a pleasure to be with you tonight. All right, we're going to begin with uh, the situation of uh, COVID-19. Where you are in uh, Wisconsin, what's the situation there? Um, the situation of COVID-19 
here in Wisconsin is uh, uh, very concerning. Um, we have gone through the phase of the pandemic where we saw a rapid rise in cases. But right now, we are on the side of the slope where we are starting to see a decrease in the number of new infections uh, every day. But uh, we still have new cases uh, coming in every day, even though we're starting to see a slow decrease in the rate of infections. Is the infection rate and death rate of blacks still rising in Wisconsin and the rest of the United States? Uh, yes, Babila, unfortunately, um, black people and uh, poorer people are disproportionately affected. We do see that the rate of infections as well as the death rate still continues to be higher amongst black people here compared to their white counterparts. All right. Now, the United Nations is raising some concerns with regards to the mental or psychological health of citizens of countries affected by the coronavirus, and the UN is urging countries to um, do more to protect the mental health of citizens. What is the impact of COVID-19 on the psychological health of citizens of the countries affected? Um, you are absolutely right, uh, Babila, to raise uh, the concern with the impact of this COVID-19 pandemic on mental health. Let us all remember that um, health is defined as a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being. Unfortunately, we tend to emphasize a lot on the physical aspects of health and forget the mental and social aspects of health. This pandemic, because of its devastating consequences on people and lifestyles, is having a tremendous impact on the mental health of people. If we're to look at how this affects health, um, I can categorize this into three. The crisis on mental health in the general public the crisis on mental health caused by the COVID pandemic on people and families who have confirmed cases of infection and the crisis on the mental health of healthcare workers. These three categories of people do suffer disproportionately from the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on their mental health. And I can go into details on these three groups uh, in a moment, if you wish. All right, let's begin with uh, the impact on the uh, relatives of persons affected, the impact on relatives of persons affected uh, by COVID-19. Yes, um, we do know that COVID-19 is a different kind of disease um, because, of, because it is highly contagious when a patient is admitted to a hospital or presents to a, a hospital or a clinic with uh, symptoms of COVID-19, they need to be isolated immediately, which means that this person is isolated from their family members and their family members need to be isolated from the general public. So this does put a serious psychological stress, not only on the patient, but on their entire family. Um, you must have heard of many cases of uh, people um, who have died in hospitals by themselves alone. In our culture as Africans, we do tend to be a very close-knit community where when someone is sick, we are there by them, helping them, supporting them to get better and providing them help. But with COVID-19, that is not possible. When you are sick, you have to be isolated from your family members, which means that your family cannot come to assist you, to help you, so you end up being alone in a clinic, alone in a hospital, separated from your family, which really sometimes the pain of that separation on the patient psychologically could even be worse than the physical impact of this disease on the body of that patient. And it gets even worse when this patient dies because we have people dying in a hospital or dying in a clinic alone by themselves 
with the other family and even after someone has died the family cannot even receive the corpse and do an appropriate burial as we are accustomed to according to our traditions so this impacts not only the person that is infected but the entire family and it is even worse when the family if unfortunately they do lose this individual that they end up dying from this infection that they are unable to grieve appropriately and give their family member a befitting burial and there are multiple cases like this on families that have been torn apart when they do lose a patient uh, from the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, the persons uh, who have contracted coronavirus, how far can the psychological impact precipitate their death? Um, the uh, psychological Can the psychological uh, impact, impact precipitate their uh, death? Yes, absolutely. It can. Um, again, remember, I started this by saying that health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being. So when someone is already physically sick from uh, the coronavirus, and on top of that, you add the stress, the mental stress of having this virus and the implications of having this virus on them and their family, that extra stress makes it even much more difficult for their body to naturally fight the virus. So the mental impact, the mental psychological impact of this stress on the patient makes it even more difficult for them to withstand and overcome the virus. So yes, those stressors can have an impact on the patient and adversely um, hinder their recovery. Now, the health workers, how are they um, psychologically uh, uh, affected by the COVID-19 as the uh, fight on the front line against uh, this pandemic? Uh, yes, Babila, I, um, uh, my heart really goes out for, uh, to all my colleagues who are healthcare workers, um, doctors, nurses, uh, nurses aides, laboratory technicians, all people working in health field in one heart or another, in one way or another. Because we do say that healthcare workers are the front lines on the fight against the coronavirus pandemic. Unfortunately, healthcare workers find themselves at a conundrum. They are stuck between a rock and a hard place. We expect healthcare workers to sacrifice and be out there to help people fight the pandemic. But unfortunately, um, our institutions and governments are not doing their part in providing these healthcare workers with the tools and the equipment that they need to be able to take care of these patients. As healthcare workers, we all take an oath called the uh, Hippocratic Oath for Physicians. Nurses have their own oath that they take called the Nightingale uh, Pledge, uh, where we pledge to really sacrifice our well-being to be there for our patients, irrespective of who they are, without any discrimination. And we want to do our jobs as health workers to help people who are infected with the coronavirus. But it is very difficult that we are not able to do that to the best of our abilities because we do not have the equipment, we do not have the materials to help take care of these patients. We cannot even protect ourselves from catching the infection. To make it even worse, um, we do face other stresses, even from patients and their families who put a lot of pressure on healthcare workers. Sometimes it's difficult for families to understand why their patient has to be isolated from them. Worst of all, if something happens and there's a bad outcome, we have seen many cases where maybe a patient died in a clinic or in a hospital, and some healthcare workers have actually been attacked by families of patients uh, when, their, uh, uh, when their loved one uh, uh, had demise in clinics or hospitals. This is extra stress, which is very traumatic for healthcare workers. So we are already seeing a surge is what they call, in what they call post-traumatic stress disorder, which is a particularly mental health condition that people face when they are in situations of uh, extreme trauma, extreme psychological trauma. Many healthcare workers in the front lines are going through this situation, and we're going to see a big impact a big negative impact on their psychological well-being through this coronavirus pandemic and for even a long time afterwards.
I was going to ask you the impact of the, uh, the psychological uh, consequences of the coronavirus on the health workers, uh, the, their performance, the discharge of their duties, and globally speaking, the fight against the coronavirus, especially in uh, countries, developing countries like Cameroon, where many of the health workers uh, are not adequately protected and not adequately equipped as they go about uh, struggling to save people in the midst of the virus. Uh, uh, yes, uh, Babila, it is, uh, it is very difficult. So as a healthcare worker who is standing there with patients, um, can you imagine that a healthcare worker goes to work and they're expected to be able to take care of people who are suspected of having coronavirus, but they are not given uh, the masks that they need, they are not even given the gloves that they need, they are not given protective clothing to protect themselves from the infection, it becomes very difficult. It is like you're putting yourself in line with danger without even the simplest equipment. If, if you imagine that an army goes out to war, but they are not given um, um, you know, arms to fight the war with, they are not given bullets to fight the war with, they are not even given shoes or boots to get into war. That is how healthcare workers are. That is how um, healthcare workers are asked, are being asked by our institutions and governments to fight this pandemic without the appropriate equipment that they need to do the job. So it is putting an extra burden on them. And many healthcare workers, unfortunately, have succumbed to the virus because of this. Many healthcare workers, unfortunately, have lost their lives to the virus just because they are exposed every day over and over. Okay, Bef before we talk about uh, what governments are expected to do to uh, protect the mental health of citizens as requested by the world the, the, the united nations uh, organization uh, let's talk about the management of this stress by individuals uh, those not affected but who have relatives who have contracted the virus uh, those who have already been uh, infected and even the health workers how should they go about managing this stress and keeping it at the lowest level possible? Um, yes, everyone is affected by the coronavirus uh, pandemic in one way or another. The general public is affected and their mental health is seriously damaged. You just heard statistics that you read on your show from the World Health Organization uh, that shows that there is a big surge in problems like depression, in problems like anxiety, with, uh, in problems like uh, uh, insomnia related to the coronavirus in the general population. It is worse in families that have had a patient infected with coronavirus, and it's even much worse in healthcare workers that are at the front lines of this. And now, what can people do to help limit the adverse uh, mental health effects of this uh, virus on them? Um, the first thing is to recognize it, is to recognize that we are all in this together, that everyone is affected by this, and even though it may be very difficult on you as a person, that you are not the only one. You know that this is a general problem. So because you are extra, uh, particularly stressed by this, it's not like this is targeting you alone. It's not that you are special and you are the only one. So know that it's a general problem and that we are all in this together. Uh, the second thing is now you have to talk, seek support in one way or another. We are all asked to uh, maintain social distancing and limit uh, our contacts with people, especially in large groups. But not being able to be close to people physically doesn't mean that you cannot be close to people socially. Um, we have to find other means of communicating either through social media, either through text messaging, either through WhatsApp, whatever way you can use to communicate with your other family members or your social support group, use that. I would encourage each and every one of us to identify who your support group is. We do have people around us in our lives. They could be friends, they could be family members, they could be colleagues that we can use as our support group. Talk to one another about how you feel, about how this 
uh, coronavirus epidemic is affecting your life. Just being able to talk about your experiences is a way of having an outlet to your feelings, which really will help uh, mitigate the impact of this uh, with the effects like uh, depression and anxiety. And again, um, from an infrastructure standpoint, I will call on our institutions and uh, policymakers not to ignore the effects, the psychological impact of this epidemic on the lives of people. Um, way and for long after the physical effects of this have ended, people will consider, continue to suffer from the psychological impact of the coronavirus epidemic on their lives. All right, Doctor, a last word. Do you have a last word before we go? An advice to Cameroonians, Africans, uh, why not the world at large? Um, um, uh, my advice uh, really will be to the general public. Um, to, I know that this has been particularly hard in uh, countries like Cameroon that are still developing countries, um, countries that already had a lot of economic hardship before the coronavirus epidemic hit. Um, uh, countries, the WHO strongly warned that countries like Cameroon that do have economic hardship, that have political instability, that have poor social support programs will be worse affected by this. And especially in regions where there is armed conflict. Um, I'm thinking particularly of the Northwest and Southwest regions where there is armed conflict. Those are the kind of regions where the long lasting effect of this virus could really be catastrophic. And I do call that we all pay particular attention to those things. One other thing that we have to be careful about is in addictive behaviors. I'm thinking about Cameroon uh, that I love very much, but our behavior in Cameroon of alcohol consumption, alcohol and other mood altering substances like drugs really can make the mental and psychological effects of this epidemic much worse. The WHO has warned that there has been a big increase in the consumption of alcohol and mood altering substances around the world during this coronavirus epidemics as people seek to this as ways of relieving their stress that alcohol will not relieve the stress i was saddened when i saw people celebrating in bars after uh, the minister lifted the ban on bars uh, opening that was right. saddening to see that happen that is the last thing that people need to be doing please, right. at this time. Doctor. Dr. Tonga for Associate Professor of Medicine at the University of Wisconsin uh, School of Medicine and Public Health. And you are also a certified cardiologist practicing in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Public health experts, thanks for joining us today. My pleasure. Have a good evening. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen. Before we wrap up, I should indicate that uh, doctors or members of the Medical Council of Cameroon met today in an extraordinary meeting to discuss issues connected to the coronavirus and, of course, the closure of the Marie O Clinic here in Cameroon's economic capital. Well, we shall be bringing to you resolutions of that meeting in a subsequent news edition. And a reminder of the latest COVID-19 figures in Cameroon, 2,910 confirmed cases, 1,697 recoveries, 137 deaths, 4.7 percent death rate, and 60 percent recovery rate in Cameroon. That's it for today. Thanks for staying with us. To have a nice weekend in the company of our programs.